Hello, muscle and strength viewers. My name is Mitchell Hooper. I'm the world's strongest man, and this is a day in the life of the world's strongest man. The priority for me when it comes to morning routine is just to get food in as quick as possible. So, I have some breast milk from a cow's breast, and chuck that into my perfect sports shaker. Then I have a new love in my life, which is the Canadian maple. Aussie bites, uh, which is just like little grain rice bites, or uh, grain raisin bites. Um, so I have four or five of these, and um, basically call it a morning. Two and a half, two and a topper. As strongmen, we don't really need to count our macros. So I don't really have a breakdown for you. But every meal, I try to get anywhere between 65 and 80 grams of protein. That's my priority. And then wherever everything falls after that, just try to keep it good food for the most part. But virtually everything I do is habitualized. So this is every single day for breakfast. And for me, that's sort of the key to being able to eat a lot of food. My career outside of Strongman is really important to me because there's a finite time in which you're going to be world's strongest man. And a lot of people don't even get to, to be the world's strongest man when they try. Any day I could blow up my back, tear a pec, tear a bicep, my career could be over. And in the end, you need something to fall back on financially, which is one element of it. But another element is that I think you need a, a greater life purpose. And part of that has to be contributing to the world more than than you're taking from it. I find the work that I do at the clinic more rewarding than what I do as a strong man, in a way, because from my perspective, there's a certain element of winning World's Strongest Man that inspires people to get moving, but it's a whole nother world when you actually see the individual in front of you, you help them get to a place where they're much healthier and their long-term prognosis is much better. So this is Homestead Bakery, which is across from my clinic. And this is the spot that I come to for lunch every day. I come to for coffee at least twice a day, I'm massive on coffee. I actually probably have about a gram and a half of caffeine a day, which is a bit of a problem, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to get work done. Uh, so just to sort of broadly speak on how my approach to nutrition has changed over the years as an athlete. Um, you know, earlier on when it was, you know, golf and marathons and football, really I just ate what I felt like eating. Um, I, I struggled with a lot of weight gain after I finished football and before I started bodybuilding. That's what it sort of what started my interest in changing body composition. Going from uh, then marathon running up through powerlifting, it's really the same. You want a high protein diet to be able to have your muscles recover. You want high calories when it comes to marathon running, it's to fuel the training when it comes to powerlifting it's to, to put on some weight. And that's really just carried through strongmen. And in strongmen, strength is an element of performance and being larger helps you be stronger. But the larger you are, the harder it is to do the, uh, the events that require stamina and agility. So for me, I hit my protein goals, which are 330 grams of protein a day. I let everything else fall where it may, and I usually end up around 5,500 calories. And if you focus on getting good, high quality foods for the majority of the day, and you get your calories, you get your protein, your carbs, your fat, you're pretty good. When it comes to the bodybuilding side, it's a whole different world. But if you want to eat to be strong, you just need to eat enough. This is a turkey sandwich. I think it tastes really good. It's got a lovely garlic aioli, which you can't see behind the tomato. Tomato, spinach, some cheese, and then a nice salad on the side. But genuinely, my approach to nutrition is like good, normal food, an extra couple of meals, 
and an extra couple of protein shakes, and then we're all good to go. Hi, Tay. Hey! <laughs> Valley girl come to work today. <laughs> Carter Rose called me. I was literally just like, where's Nick? Oh, do you need me? Do you want to move some things first? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. actually do need this one flipped over because I don't know what it is. Okay, sure. Thank you. Ta da! This particular, they either weigh 60 or 70 kg. This one is 60, I think. For the camera, it's 70. It's 70. <laughs> 70 kg. It's at least 220 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We made it. We're here at the gym. And it's time to get started, which means it's time for what I call the perfect rain, where I always dry scoop, just cause I usually forget a shaker cup. So you hit the dry scoop. Mm -hmm. ah. Simple as that. That's how I get halfway to my 1.5 grams of caffeine a day. Usually. Two scoops, and we're all good to go. Let's do it. Oh, nice. How good's that? Some protein bars and a bit of a Snickers protein bar. Just feeling hungry, feeling a bit lightheaded. So I'm gonna have a bit of a quick feed and we'll be good to go. So rarely does this ever happen. I think it hasn't happened in the past 12 months, but I've lost about seven pounds since Worlds and sometimes a little bit underfair, getting lightheaded during workouts. High levels of caffeine don't, don't help. Um, I probably ate a little bit less today than I normally would. So having a couple of things mid-workout, say five, 600 calories, uh, just to be able to get blood sugar levels up, get the stomach full and just regulate things a bit before getting back into training uh, would be good. I've got about a 20 minute window between sets that I'll be completely fine. Uh, I'm still sweating, I'll stay warm. And um, since I'm not doing very high volume stuff today, I'm not particularly concerned about eating mid-workout and having that make me feel sick. So. This is the peanut butter sandwich of the day. We're gonna have some uh, muffins. We already had our protein bar, protein balls. Uh, that didn't really do the trick. So this should be a plenty and we'll kick back into it afterwards. calories for Mitchell. Do you? <laughs> I try and put as many calories as possible. So I put bananas, mango, pineapples, strawberries. Normal people get like half a brick of yogurt, but you know, Mitchell's not normal. So he gets a full brick of yogurt. Some diesel. He gets a couple scoops of this. big heaping scoops. We'll give them a little bit of coconut. Just and then so as a kid I basically played every North American team sport you can imagine uh, from hockey, basketball, football, uh, baseball. I swam for a bit. I, I played golf at a really high level. Then going into university I played football uh, after I was done football at university, I put on a bunch of weight and wanted to lose that weight and see if I could do a bodybuilding show. So I lost about 110 pounds to the bodybuilding show. Uh, it was very below average. Uh, then from there, transitioned into marathon running. I uh, just wanted to experience what high level aerobic fitness was like. Um, 
in pursuit of feeling everything I ask people to do in a professional capacity. I finished marathon running, I ran three. Best time was 3.24, which is probably about top 20%. Good, not great. I uh, went to Australia and that took me to powerlifting where I just happened to find a gym where guys uh, competed in powerlifting. I did that for about eight months. I won the national championship in Australia. Uh, looked for something a little bit more athletic and some of the guys at the gym did strongman. So that got me stuck into strongman. I did about four local shows. This is all in and amongst COVID. And uh, I got a really lucky wildcard invite to World's Strongest Man in 2022. So I went there and uh, I beat Brian Shaw in the group stage, which is the first time in 13 years that he had lost in the group stage. I ended up eighth and then in subsequent competitions, I hit the podium every single show that year. Uh, there was seven of those. And then now in 2023, I haven't lost yet. So I did, I won the um, Australia's Strongest International. I won the Arnold Strongman Classic and I won World's Strongest Man. And at this point, I've won the last five or six shows now. On a bit of a hot streak at the moment, it's been incredibly fast coming up in Strongman. I started training it about three and a half, four years ago. Uh, but I think that varied athletic background has led me to have a lot of athletic qualities that benefit me in Strongman and push me to be the best I could be. We're wrapping up work for the day. Uh, it's coming up on dinner time, so I'm gonna head out to a firehouse sub, get myself a sub for dinner, shake before bed. Um, otherwise, you basically saw what goes into a day as the world's strongest man. Uh, I like to think that it's more ordinary than one might believe, and I hope that inspires you guys a little bit that uh, maybe your goal isn't to be the world's strongest man, but if the goal is to be the strongest version of yourself, you can live a completely normal life, dedicate a reasonable amount of time to your training and the gym and be able to accomplish a hell of a lot with a bit of consistency. Uh, so next for me, um, I am halfway through the best strong menu of all time. If I keep on the track I am, I will be in consideration uh, for having the best 12 month period that Strongman has ever seen. So if you want, follow along. You can search me up, Mitchell Hooper on YouTube, Mitchell Hooper on Instagram, Mitchell Hooper on TikTok, Mitchell Hooper on Facebook. Search my name, you will find me. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Have a great day. Pop in the comments what you think was the most interesting part of a day in the life as the world's strongest man.